from Percy to the group about um, what they want, what they want, what you guys, uh, for your further thoughts and what you want to do. He has questions for you, I'm sure, as well. So, stuff I'd like to say philosophically. Okay. <laughs> so, let's. Actually, Larry, if you okay. kick off with your, your questions and comments. Your okay. comments. So, <laughs> people are saying, it's like, well, what do we want to get out of this, this whole thing? And so I'm going to be a representative of the university, small, you know, nanosat community, and say, what I, what I want, you know, is the ability to go to a vendor and to say, I've got a CubeSat, I want to get it launched, and I, and I want to be treated nicely, and I want a, a reasonable cost for, you know, for this whole thing. And so, you know, I don't want to be held hostage to you know a you know a uh, solution, if you will, that you know, requires me to you know, to go with you know eight other you know universities or, or you know what you know whatever. And so yeah, that's one of the reasons why you know, we're thinking you know, that we should have like a cap on the size of the you know, payload mass to you know, to orbit because if if we don't do that, then we're going to end up possibly with solutions which say. All right, it's optimized for 100 pounds to orbit to, you know, to, you know, to go after the Air Force business, and you know if that's the case, will you guys actually be willing to, to launch that thing for a guy who has you know a you know one kilogram you know CubeSat you know at a reasonable price when you could sit there going like hmm you know if I wait for 99 more of these guys to show up, I can make a lot more money, right? So that's you know, philosophically what we're what we're wrestling with you know here is that you know there is a Another competition out there, you know, that is going for a particular you know, class, you know, class of, of, of payloads or whatever. We don't want to be, you know, stepping on their business any more than we want them stepping on ours, because Congress will, you know, start asking both of us and says, "Why are you guys doing the same thing?" And so, you know, we're looking at it's like, all right, we've said we at least one kilogram. So the question is like, how far above one kilogram do we do we go? To set something which you know, will be a solution which is appealing to you know the small end you know this, you know, this nano set segment of the market as opposed to the small set or you know, the, you know something like that and you know where the small where the nano set guys end up de facto being a, you know, a, a, a parasitic or secondary you know, payload and so, so philosophically that's you know kind of what we're thinking about. Um, if you do go to that end, I would recommend a maximum of a 6U or 12U, which I believe is um, 8 or 16 kilograms, mm -hmm. um, just because those are the standards that people are going up to where this, this is a maximum mm -hmm. level that's already been defined, so you can just reference to that, mm -hmm. if you want to go there. Well, if we did, is that going to, you know, you know... Well, if yeah. I mean, there's also you need to keep in mind that well, I guess the, no matter what you're going to have, a, somebody's going to have to have a, a flight termination package. Or something. Oh, yeah. So you got to remember that's a, a fairly hefty thing right now. Yeah. Um, so. Well, yeah, you're going to have to take care of those things into account in terms of you know what you're counting as payload mass, if you will. So, uh, I mean, th this is a concern, and we're wrestling with this exact point. Um, yeah, but that program. Uh, if somebody goes into that program, they couldn't compete in the challenge based upon the government funding rules you kind of put out there. Mm -hmm. So I think a maximum is a good idea, whatever that is. And then there's also this other thing of the, as the rules, as you said it, will also probably put up a wall mm -hmm. to people moving over from, from that program. So uh, I have a quick question. So you're looking for basically just uh, where you have one satellite and you are the only payload in the rocket? Well, I mean, from a university perspective, that would be my, you know, the optimum for me. Okay, and generally you guys, like, from the research that I've done, like, it's generally one, one U, three U cube sets that you're up. Typically, I think. Okay, right, so, so ideally then you like one, uh, one to three kilo payload. Well, there you go, I mean, that's, you know, that's typically where they're, you know, where they're at right now. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've been looking for, I see a little bit of stuff written about maybe there's six U and things like that, but I actually have not seen any deployment mechanisms. I guess there's special custom stuff, but that sort of gets away from the purpose of you know trying to make it really easy. Mm -hmm. If you have to have a lot of custom stuff, then you know your market size is going to yeah. So. You know the idea there of uh, you know again the, the small sat or a micro sat nano sat having a primary payload kit filled. Right. So you know yeah we, you know we could say sure 
take six satellites at a time. You know, that's no different than you know uh, anybody else providing a, a service package. One's primary, and the other five just go for the ride. So, you know, what again? What's the focus? What's what's the objective of the challenge that we're trying to drive here to? Is it to make sure that people can uh, launch just one payload? Well, one, you know, there's probably a secondary market. Some people that really wouldn't care, they just want to fly. So maybe do you make it just, you know, enough capacity for two or three payloads, which is a 6U or, or three 1Us or, you know, a 1U and a 3U or, you know, where's, 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 what's the envelope that you try to put on this so that you get the objective that you want, somebody gets the primary payload, it's still low cost, it's still, you know, and, and then it's still hopefully easier to do because the secondary objective coming out of this that Larry and I were talking about is that we do try to push down regulation. We do try to push down um, range safety paradigms that they have. I mean, the question you know, is, like, you know, can we, you know, could we get something down to the level where you can get an expedited, you know, review and you don't have to have, you know, Eight people at the consoles looking, you know, doing your range safety. It's like, you know, you know what are the things that you can, you know, sort of, that are, I mean, these things you know, are kind of fixed cost, whether you're doing, you know, you know, one kilogram to orbit or maybe a hundred kilograms to orbit or, you know, even, you know, even larger. I mean, you still have to go through, you know, a lot of these, you know, same gates. And the question is like, well, you know, if you got, you know, got the things down, you know, size-wise to a certain level, you know, would you know, the organizations be willing to, you know, to, you know, entertain, you know, thinking about these things differently, you know, somewhat than, you know, than they do for, like, a Delta or something, or something like that. I was going to, you know, list, I, I, this is one of my first experiences in this particular, I guess, segment of the mm -hmm. market, and learn, listening to the talks, um, and especially about the economic analysis about a viable industry, Sounds to me like you know one's too small, a hundred's probably too big. So it's definitely somewhere in between. Mm -hmm. so, and if you look at the the, if I may, unfortunately, yeah. um, one of our speakers, I purposely um, aimed for three speakers. One was a pessimistic view, one was an optimistic view, and one was somewhere <laughs> in between. And unfortunately, the optimistic view did not was not able to make it. So <laughs> oh, don't, don't tell me was was uh, was Mr. Yu the pessimistic one? Yes, he was. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was it was intentional because of the fact that we wanted to have a spectrum of opinion mm -hmm. instead of just a, a rah rah let's go type thing. Do you, um, do you know what the optimistic number was? The optimistic yeah. number is they were so supply blocked they can't give you a number. Oh, okay. They really, truly... Um, oh, but it's great. It's yeah. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, you will not believe this. Yeah. Oh, wow. The optimistic view is right. that, honestly, um, it's it probably uh, about four times or so what um, AC was saying. So, so 600. 600 a year. So, but when you talk about industry viability, if you're going to go out and get financing, right, right. from real money people, yes. the, the problem is you, you need a spectrum gonna, of a minute. right, and they're going to shut the well, they're going to shut the door on you the minute you you, you know start talking about numbers so big you can't even describe them, right? Right. No, no. no. So, it, it was about four times what AC said. Okay. 600 plus. 600. 600. Yeah. So, but still, I think just from a cost to launch perspective, That's if if we say 500,000 bucks, somewhere between 250 and 500,000 bucks. Um, is the is sort of the you're kind of pushing down into the into the, uh, the out of la la land and <laughs> into where it makes or pushing up into where it makes financial sense. So somewhere between, in my perspective, somewhere between twenty five and fifty kilograms is the right number. So uh, I would think more uh, towards fifty, but uh, oh, yeah. for the max size, you're saying for the max size, right? Yeah, and um, and along those lines, if you really do want to make sure that it. If there people aren't developing things where it's economical to wait, then you probably want to put a maximum payload size, as in the rocket could not take more of that. Right. We're trying to define right. a market segment, and so yeah, right, you want right. to you right. want to bound it, I think. And yeah, so someone could launch a one kilogram payload on a one on ten kilogram or hundred, but that's what we're trying to develop. Right. True. Uh, okay. I have, I have another question. Um. So the gentleman who uh, does like the work with ISRO, like he talked about the like, massive beer cutter hurdles. And do you guys face the same thing? Doing like I'm rash. I'm rash. Yeah. yeah. The Indian space. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, the Indian so, space he's working with the Indian Space Agency. Yeah, I mean I know like India like is a notorious reputation for like making tons of red tape. Um, there's a lot of red well, tape there, but there's also on top of that here we have he has to deal with ITAR as well. So 
and he's crossing a, a, a border as well as going into a, a completely different bureaucracy. Right, I understand that, but I'm saying that you usually do an American university, right? Uh, in the yeah. NASA program? N not necessarily. I mean, yeah. well, we, we yeah. do, but, but I mean, yeah. that's not the market. That's, that's not the only market that's there. We right, NASA, I, was, I was just curious, is it a lot like, more streamlined for you guys? Like, because you don't have to go through the ITAR or... No, oh. it, it, the, the same rules and regulations. <laughs> you, 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 you don't have ITAR in, <clears throat> for U.S. stuff, but you do have, what they call it? Um, the, the FAA. The FAA actually. and things like that. The FAA, as we talked about last night, it actually wants to help you. They don't want to shoot you down. Right, right. But you can't go into there with thumping your chest. If you do, then they're they're gonna have problems. Well, and, and then I was, Nick made a comment to, to thank Paul for his comments because he said he's right. The, what Paul said yesterday late was was correct. You, you can't go to FAA and tell them this is what we're doing, but I don't know what to do here. What should I do? You're not gonna get an answer. But you know, if you can get there face to face and, and kind of lay out your picture, they you know, and you, if you send it by email, they're not gonna give you an answer. You go face to face. You go by telecon. They might be able to provide you some verbal guidance, but they're not going to tell you that they're providing you verbal guidance, that, that kind of a thing. So they want to help you, but you got to understand what their the limitations are, what their limitations are. Oh, and, and, you know, this, this university market is, is basically a market that you know, says, we've got satellites that we you know, and ideas of things that we want to fly, that we just don't have any way to get, you know, get them to orbit. And so when the you know, shuttle was flying, we had you know, like things in the pay, you know, the payload bay, you know, <coughs> specials and, you know, and things like that. You know, that was flying on a, you know, our vehicle or a you know, NASA vehicle. Now that that doesn't exist any, you know, anymore, they're, you know, they're kind of going into the NASA's buying you know, space on, you know, you know, on commercial vehicles that we're putting our you know, uh, science satellites on, you know, things like that. So you know, the onus to deal with you know all of these issues you know then falls you know back on the university you have to work with the other launch vehicle provider as well as the primary payload and so NASA is just basically buying a ride for them and we're you know we're not you know directly in the path you know pathway but you of, of, of a lot of this stuff anymore. So do these, uh, so the cost is still the same like the ones 250,000 from like concept to actual flight like going through all the hurdles, it's still about the same if you're an American university looking to find an American vehicle? The problem is that how um, Paul is also measuring that based on the amount of time he does. So, and, and what is time? Oh, before? okay. 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 Right. So, um, so it's not actually like you fork over that much. Like, <coughs> the FAA doesn't charge you a cent. Okay. Right. Oh, okay. okay. So, right. so, so you have to count your time how much it costs you. If you're doing a business, your time is not free. Okay. How much do you charge for that? And the charge, um, Paul's answer is it costs him about a quarter million to do it. But if you don't have that vital piece of paper, you're not going anywhere. Exactly. Rand is right that about that too. So you, you're not going to, you can go attempt to do that. However, you may have a, a number of, of agents <coughs> there to pick you up afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they were easy to work with. They're very easy to work with. They're, yes, exactly. The, the FAA is, is not your enemy, despite what you made here. Right. Well, the, you know, I mean, the other thing, too, you know, too is, you know, like, you know, it's like the spaceports. I mean, what, you know, what's their capacity? I mean, could, you know, if we had 600 launches a year, could they actually, you know, support 600 launches? Or is it, you know, is it come, you know, you know where are the bottle, future bottlenecks and all, this, all, this, all of this stuff? I, you know, I don't know, you know. You know, they're, they're a company too. They, they need to make right. they, their, their profit margin. They need to make their operating costs and everything like that. It, but and it, <coughs> it, it's, I, I thought that was an interesting story yesterday, whoever told it about going to be a, the Vandenberg to launch. And they got into the conference room and so they, yeah. so, so they get in the conference room and there's 50 people standing around you know, all it, <laughs> waiting for their payments. Claire, like, Claire and I were kind of joking about, you know, yeah, I can see it now. You know, there's the guy. Uh, who are you from? Uh, Rhodes. You drove on our property, so you need this. Yeah, who you got? Oh, we lubricate the front gate. We had to open it for you. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to handle your whale migration issues, and we're going to handle the uh, flobbers nesting, and you know, and, and everything you can possibly think of, up to the level of the tracking people and the really expensive uh, items. That, but you're almost you're almost required to uh, to use them. See, so but the frustrating part to me again is is coming in and, and working with these, trying to, and I, I guess I was talking to well, Will and Percy and, and Larry this morning. So what are some other objectives coming out of this challenge? Well, some of the objectives that I hope that would be long-term are going to be reduction in regulation, um, 
change, you know, paradigm shift within uh, uh, the range operations. You know, the, if we if anybody decides to use other spaceports, you know, if if, we, if, if that's in there, then you know, the ability of, of them to reduce their cost and reduction and come in, you know, it's a new. They got to have a new mindset, especially if people are going to be coming in with nanosat launches, trying to do it in a low cost, high frequency. You, 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 you can't treat me like this is like, a, like a Falcon One. Right. I mean, if I'm coming in, I, you know, it's going to take me, you know, two hours to do my launch, not you know two weeks. You know, cut me some slack here, you know. So. I don't know. Florida will be benevolent, you know, and uh, grant us those <coughs> windows. But I don't think that it's possible that when you have about 600 satellites mm -hmm. here, you have to you have to provide an alternate, alternate launch site. That's, that's why we're going from the ocean. Or an alternate or, or an alternate process. But you're yeah. right. Yeah. <coughs> so, like I said, I mean, this you know this challenge is not, is not just a technological <coughs> one. It's you know it's a bureaucratic one too. To you know figure out it's like all right, well, what are the barriers? You know, uh, what are the you know the, the um, choke points in the in the thing? Are there things that you know that can you know can be done differently? And we're hoping that you know that as you go through this process, you'll 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 let, you'll, you'll identify those things, bring them to our attention, and then you know uh, you know. Try to you know work through you know is there an expedited process you know that can be put in place you know for the future because obviously you know this whole market I mean it's you know, as I was telling Sam this is from an economics point of view that you get, you've got kind of like fixed cost and variable cost then you know if the fixed cost you know are you know ninety five percent of the you know of the problem you know then whatever you do to make your rocket more efficient or whatever is not going to really solve you know, much of the you know, much of the of the bottom line dollar cost and as I mentioned earlier I mentioned somewhere earlier this morning this is uh, like I said I work with the space grants a, a lot and you know that community you know, you know, would love to launch you know you know every one of them would love to launch a nanosat a year so there's like 50 you know 50 payloads you know and they'd be willing to tolerate a fairly high uh, you know failure rate simply because these are educational experiences and you know, well, yeah, you want to get, you know, you'd like to have success and you'd like to get your data back and all that stuff, but if you're doing it as a senior design project and things like, like that, this is, you know, 80 or 90 percent of the benefit of doing this thing, you know, is gathered by just getting it to the launch pad and getting it off the ground in the first place. And so, you know, there are, you know, things that, you know, they might be willing to back off on, you know, in terms of reviews and things like that, in terms of the the number of, of people in the room and people you know, looking over their shoulder and everything else that could potentially drive the cost down. Yeah. And, some of the, you know, and some part of that would be making sure that the, when they fail, they fail in a safe way. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Right, and that's going to let the FAA relax a little bit. Right. right. What, what, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, what about feeding back into the, the, you know, the satellite design itself, like the NanoSat? I mean, some of the things that I've been seeing here is that, um, you know, we're taking this kind of a traditional satellite approach mm -hmm. of, um, you know, this thing is very fragile, but then that kind of dictates the type of launchers that you're going to have to do, you know, mm -hmm. deal with. So what if, you know, an outside of the box thinking, you know, may have to push some boundaries. Mm -hmm. How do we, you know, if we're just going to approach this as a launcher and not as kind of an overall solution, then you know, we're cutting, we're cutting, we're cutting some of our, you know, options out. Yeah, well, like I say, that's what a challenge is, you know, is, is designed to do, is to, you know, permit those out-of-the-box solutions, you know, to, you know, to emerge and to, you know, to, you know challenge conventional wisdom. Yes, but I'd, I'd be careful about changing too many, too many variables at the same time, right? Sure. Because otherwise you won't be able to... But, but the thing is, is if, if one of the presentations yesterday was talking about, you know, universities right now are building one use, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we're hoping that, you know, with the advent of low-cost launchers and stuff like that, universities can then start building three U's wow. and, you know, little larger satellites, you know, just like what they're doing now as education. Well, if I'm going to build a one U launcher and in four years when the university has started building three U's, my one U launcher is actually going to be a pretty um, obsolete piece of technology, you know. So, I mean, if, if we're looking at these things to kind of feed back upon you know, growth and, oh, and the satellites wow. and stuff like that. Why don't we also, you know, build a little more redundancy or a little more so the, um, the hardening yeah. of the stuff 
My, my assumption is, is the, the, the current CubeSat standard, in fact, does have both 1U and 3U in it. That's, that's right. in the spec already. Right. right. Oh, I understand so, that. I understand but that. But if you, if you limit the competition, you're saying if you limit the competition just at 1U launch only. Well, you, we're, you, we've been starting? talking about 1U one, one is what you're putting up there currently, right? Right. But, um, you know, you're not designing for one, one kilogram. I mean, you have to design for, you know, you know, you know 20 at least. Um, based on all the, some of the other safety things that you have to put in, the, you know, um, harnesses and those types of things. So, you know, your rocket itself is, you know, yeah. has the capability. So if you go to a different spaceport, your payload actually then changes depending upon the, you know, the detonation package and stuff like that that you can have. So, you know. Well, doesn't that also self, like, I mean, it solves the problem for you, right? If, uh... You have to design for 20 if you launch from, say, like Vandenberg, and you do that, and then, oh, you know, find out that, you know, it's cheaper to go from Florida. You, you have a 20 kilo payload, it's like rocket then. Yeah. And, I mean, just design for the worst case, you end up like covering like... Oh, well, no, 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 I understand that, but, but then when we were also talking about, you know, doing the, um, you know, maximum, you know, maximum payload that the rocket is capable of doing, and all of a sudden, you know, in order to launch from one site, you're now your maximum payload, you've just blown that through, you know? Well, true. I mean, if you say 20, 20 kilos is your maximum payload, right, and you have, you know, a 21 kilo, you know, detonation package for one site, right, all of a sudden your rocket is ineligible to launch any place else because, you know, it's over that maximum. It also but, depends but on that's, what you define your payload, because, like, if you're launching from, like, that launch site, then your flight, your, your flight termination package is seen as essential to the operation of the rocket because, you know, it has to be there to blow it up if it goes out of control. Yeah. So see, like, yeah, uh, two points I think. One is you go, as people go into the design process of these launch vehicles, I think what you realize is the actual design margin is greater than the payload capability. Yeah. And so what that means is when you design this rocket, you're, if you're aiming for one kilogram to a uh, <coughs> kilometer orbit, you may miss that completely. You know, you, miss, you may miss that by five kilograms, plus or minus, because of the uncertainty in your rocket system, the guidance system, the propellant, where the propellant is, all those uncertainties in the design process and the launch affect the payload. So as a vehicle designer, it, technically, if I'm going after a one kilogram uh, payload orbit capability, I'm going to design for 10, because my margin is maybe 10, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's one thing. And the other thing, uh, thinking long term, I, I agree with you on the, the, the long term um, effect of this competition would be decreased regulation, enhanced range. The other thing to keep in mind is, okay, the competition itself is one kilogram, let's say one kilogram, for one orbit, right? Well, universities may want a month or two in orbit. So if that's kind of where you want to have a capability, maybe it should be a little bit higher uh, than one or three kilograms, uh, based upon what I said about design, but also eventually you want uh, one kilogram for several months on orbit, and that's probably a little bit higher. Or, or three um, kilograms. Or, or three well, kilograms. And I'm wondering if maybe that was also what... Could, well, and that's what drove the question that was thrown at us for uh, orbital altitude. You get at a higher altitude, your decay is going to take right. longer to decay. You're going to get your, right. your, your time automatically. Right. So do we put a minimum altitude though? You know, yeah. to be perfectly honest, I think what would be very useful is if everybody tried to design, I, I'm not saying that people should do this, but for the community, it would be nice if there were several, not 1U launchers, but 3U launchers that I knew could get to an orbit that had maybe a few months of lifetime. You know? mm -hmm. I think the universities would like that. Uh, you know, and, and, and so it's not one U, but I'd say it's three U. Uh, I'm not saying that's what it should be, but maybe if, if there are several launchers like that, that, that'd be very useful for several months of on orbit. Well, mm -hmm. there's another like, flip side there. If you, uh, you know, increase your payload, and the physics also dictates your rocket's going to be like, that much bigger. So, I mean, I'm sure a lot of us here, like, I mean, if you want to deal with some of the handling difficulties with some more energetic propellants, your rocket's going to end up being like a monstrosity beast. Like, especially if you stick with kerosene and oxygen play blocks, you know, you just get a huge rocket. And the <coughs> payload you, you add to it, the harder the challenge becomes. So, yeah. But you can choose propellants that allow you to build a small, effective launcher. 
That's part of the design process as well. True, true, but also they have like their associates hanging with what we said. Liquid hydrogen you know, is oh, well, that's, yeah, it's that's, not the And then you have the infrastructure to go with that when you start doing large amounts. So that's true, not true, on true. our list. Yeah. But I mean, you know, like you have build an HTV first stage, put it in your trunk, drive it to range, no problem. That's right. <laughs> so I think oh, the, worry. The, the spirit of the competition does really push you to the limit. I mean, I would I would argue that it pushes you to the limit. But I also would say that from business viability, there's other <coughs> business models besides the one and the three U that you want to allow people to compete for, which it would be like the you know rapid response from the Air Force. <clears throat> and then something I just thought of, but maybe it was mentioned previously, which was, let's say somebody wants to do a, a small sat with, uh, you know, ten one U um, cube sets or cube uh, cube uh, what do you call it? cube lab modules onto it, you know, or maybe eight three U modules. So from business viability perspective, there's other. Like I think you want to let those people still compete. Well, and that's why we make sure we don't make the box too small that they can't. Yeah. But on the other hand, you know, we want to, I want to preclude, and I, I know this is, be, this is the easiest one to use because we know it's not feasible. You know, I want to preclude Delta coming in and launching. Right. You know, yeah, obviously they can't, they're just government funded, blah, blah, blah. But the concept idea that, you know, somebody that has a vehicle out there, they did, they did do um, R&D and it's just kind of sitting as a stockpile kind of a thing. And they built it on, you know, corporate I, I, I R&D money. So I read money, so you know, theoretically they could launch it, and it's just sitting there. Two million dollars, let's go get it. Come on, shoot. done. That's not what we want. Yeah, I still think the right number lies somewhere between twenty-five and fifty kilograms is the max. I'd say hundred. Yeah, but for you know, for you know, what market? I mean, I guess this is the diff market that, you know that you know, as opposed to the market that might emerge. You know. I'm looking you know. at. I'm looking at thirty. <clears throat> I'm looking at 30 satellites per launch minimum, and then, uh, as, as uh, AC was saying, you should always uh, build a vehicle that's going to uh, have a little extra mm -hmm. in case some of the systems aren't performing as mm -hmm. you would desire. So yeah, if, if yeah. we're looking at 70 kilos, you know, uh, you know, but if, you know yeah, but your design margin is your design margin. Right. right. But if yeah, you're talking, you're talking about, but, but if you're talking about limiting the amount of well, payload talking, in this, if you're vehicle, talking about doing 30 satellites, how's mm -hmm. that going to, you know? Work for me as a, a university professor. Well, wow. you're going to be one of those so, guys that gets supply and says sit on the shelf. Uh, you weren't here when he said it. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the specific objectives is to get one or three satellites as the primary field, not 20, but, but not 50. She does have a business case in that when you get to the end of the academic term, everyone's going to want to fly their satellite at the same time, yeah. in which case mm -hmm. she'll take them. Right. In the so meantime, there'll be people during the term where I, I agree with AC. There's multiple you know, one to three yeah. kilograms yeah. for several months. Yeah. So there was, you know, once upon a time, ships used to sail across the ocean when they had enough payload, <laughs> right? And they'd wait at the dock until they had enough things. And then one day somebody said, you know what, let's just run them on a schedule. And that, your academic audience would be very happy to say, there's launch dates on the fourth of each month, right? You know. Pick the one you want, you know, and in the fall, in the spring, there's a lot more, there's more, there's two each month, right? <laughs> I see that as an emerging scenario. Right, so, when, and then, you know, people know there's this launch dates, I can target my development schedule but those, to hit those, those dates. But those are deviations that need to be made by the corporate world after the technology is in place. We're just trying to push to yeah. get the technology there. But you're not trying to limit the amount that we launch on our, yeah, on our that's launches. So that's what we're talking about. Yeah. 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 But why would you are. do that? Why for the competition. That? Right. For the, for the competition. Be because... They're trying to decide if they, what exactly they're trying to get out of this robot. Are they trying to get a, a quick, responsive one? Well, this, or are they trying to get a... Well, this, that same vehicle is a quick, responsive vehicle because we're planning to launch two at the same time, essentially, or one within the week. But, you know, why should you limit the amount that's uh, carried? That seems strange. You know, because there, there are, there's a demand there, and we've... Well, it sounds like you've you designed I mean, for that. Well, well, studied I mean, that. Anything else depends on, like, you know, do you want the choice of orbits, or do you just well, exactly. want to go up and exactly? I mean, if you know, if I'm a university faculty member and I want to go to a certain orbital inclination that you're not going to, well, then, then you buy a dedicated launch and we arrange a launch for you from that uh, that particular launch point. That yeah, but you you know, but you're going to charge me as though there were thirty, you know, thirty other or twenty nine other people going along. Yes, but it still would be me. cheaper than most of the things out there, according to what we're doing. So. Uh, as as cheap as a vehicle of the launch five? Pardon me? As cheap as a vehicle of the launch five? 
I'm sorry to understand. That's as inexpensive as it would be to have a, de a dedicated launcher that would do five as opposed to 30. Uh, well, it, it depends. Uh, it depends on what other options you would have. If you were to spend, in our, in our case, if you took a, say you wanted to go to other than our 310 standard kilometer orbit, uh, maybe on a 500 kilometer orbit, uh, it would cost you more anyway uh, to go to that orbit with us. And it would still be cost effective because we would be charging less than, well, even less than the Indians at this point. Actually, what you're talking about is they might go with an option like us who do have, who do plan to have a dedicated one year launcher and who could, in theory, go to this launch trajectory that nobody else is going to without charging for 29 other people. Yes, we'd have to go through the FAA, that, but that But would you charge under a million dollars for that launch? Hell yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and so would we. So, and, and that would be, an, that'd be stars, a perfect end probably. state of the competition, is that we would have multiple companies out there with multiple platforms, multiple capabilities, all, below, all less than a million dollars a launch. So, I, I think, um, if you think about an upper limit, I think you need to be more, more specific. Okay. And maybe a straw man I would put out there would be the upper limit should be, based on the study of the design margins and other things, would be 10 kilograms, to 300 kilometers at 20 and a half degrees. So pick that point, mm -hmm. and then and then bring that back down to one orbit. What is that 10 kilograms at one orbit? And that would then be your maximum, you know, because you're targeting, because essentially that maybe that's, you want maybe one to three U at 300 kilometers, but people need to put some, some design margin, so give them seven, seven to nine kilograms of design margin at, uh, at, at the space Florida, it's Florida's inclination, because they're the, you know, just pick one. And at 300 kilometers, which would give you a few months or so, and then bring that back down to one orbit, and then that could be a max. So Actually, that's some rational justification for why you have a max. Would that also go counter to the uh, you know, should you limit the spaceport if you launch from? Because if uh, yeah. well, no, that, that, that won't limit you. Just that's the goal. Oh, okay. Well, and you I can move that inclination, and, and, and you know you can yeah. try to go for that. Or that, that. That's a good point, yeah. and, and I guess the. Uh, I guess I, I'd like to throw a question out because a couple, couple people have expressed that you know they're they're launching from uh, ocean. How many people uh, and are I guess the rest of y'all are people looking to launch from a spaceport? Are you looking to redefine uh, a launch location, a new launch location, or we're planning to launch from airports, not spaceports? Okay, so if, airports. If, if there are spaceports which have airports and can do facil support facilities, fine. Okay. Preferably, we'd, we'd like KC because it's close. No. I'm, uh, I'm sorry. I may make an interjection. If you're going to do the airport, <coughs> the whole, that makes a whole section, different section of FAA you have to deal with than normal, than just AST. So just a warning. We well, yeah, and Nick, Nick, Nick made comments okay. that yesterday. Okay. So that, yeah. So, well, yeah. Me? The same, same as the airport? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And spaceport, so. Ah. Yeah, I think it would be have to be a spaceport because if it's an orbital launch or going for an orbital license, you have to launch from a place that has a site operator's license unless you own the land. So even if you go to an airport, that airport has to have an FAA site operator's license uh, in some sense. Uh, and I don't think Nick and the FAA will let you get away with that. And that's yeah. that could uh, be. Uh, folks can launch from certain uh, from airports. They need uh, for a Part 101 waiver. It's possible to launch from an airport. You you need a Part 101 waiver. Um, it's much easier if it's a licensed spaceport like Mojave, right. which they, it's both an airport and a spaceport. Would, sure. would that environmental assessment be also required for that site, separate from the launch operator? If you go for a an amateur uh, launch, no, but for a, um, a licensed launch, yes, or permitted right. launch, yes. And since you're trying to put something in orbit, I it may be remotely possible to put something in orbit under amateur, very tiny payload, but I, I doubt it. So, just data point for you. By the way, if I can ask a silly question, the, the, the definition I thought I heard yesterday of an amateur rocket was 200 kilopounds? No, kilopound newtons? 200,000 pound uh, seconds of total impulse. Yeah, so 200,000. 200,000 pound seconds of impulse or less, you can get an amateur rocket waiver. Okay. Um, actually, from air traffic organization, but we do all the support and the technical analysis. They just basically give it over to us, and then uh, <coughs> traffic will give you um, 
you know, there's green light yet to operate from a, that, that launch from a certain uh, location. Like the uh, Black Rock Nevada people launched some really huge rockets up there that uh, go to great altitude. <coughs> Gotcha. Under amateur rocket, uh, but but they're still under two hundred pounds. They're under two hundred thousand pounds. That is correct. So two hundred, yeah. I so I was I wanted to make sure I had the right number of zeros. Or maybe there's a second stage that you want to try, uh, make even accounting of the time for the lower altitude or something like that. But uh, just to buy down risk, you may want to fly your first stage, you know, independently. It's theoretically possible to get something to orbit with 200,000 pound seconds, but it'd be a very small payload. Anyway. So if you're, you're going to limit, we were talking about the <clears throat> limiting the mass capability, of the, so maybe once you figure out a methodology for determining that, if you do, so maybe it's in the form of uh, total impulse <clears throat> yeah. for the, uh, for the yeah. system, right? Because then let, allow the, the no, integrator to figure out where they're going to use for margin, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So if you actually go to orbit, if you did suborbital, even if it was hundreds of miles with an amateur rocket waiver, you can still do suborbital for 100 miles, multiple hundred miles ballistic trajectory. But to actually go to orbit, orbit, you do need a license. But you can do many launches, suborbital launches under amateur rocket waiver, which is easier to get. Just, just putting that out there. Okay. Didn't mean to disrupt the conversation. Mm -hmm. Oh, way to go, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. No, I mean, we're, yeah, it's, 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 uh, I, get, I get the perceptions that for so many people, it's just it's really stressful discussions that are going on. But, I mean, I, these are things, I, I don't want people to be surprised, and I don't want to be surprised when I put the rules out with people saying, we didn't talk about that! You know? no, I, that's why I'm trying to open it up, I'm trying to get people's comments, I'm trying to get people's feedback. Um, again, the rules are going to go out for public review. You'll have your chance then to, to push back and say, I, I, don't, I, I think this rule needs to be changed, and this is why. And you know, So by all means, you know, let's, let's have a, a discussion now. We'll have another discussion later. And, uh, uh, actually, kind of uh, I have a question on that. Is there like any uh, talks about the cost limit or cost requirement in the challenge? Or that so? Uh, you know, we've thought about that, but the struggle, and, and, and like we don't know maybe. how to get, you get your cost, you know, inf your information and you know, what you, you know. Well, you what, know, how about the operating cost? Like, uh, I mean, what is the operating cost? If, if, if it's expendable, I mean, if you have your own manufacturing base. I mean, yeah, but the operating cost depends on how many you launch a year, right? That's yeah, true, true. Or if it's reusable, just a few on. Yeah, reusable is a little tough. That's, what, that's true what's hard is, about but, trying to do a, yeah. a cost uh, limit or a cost value yeah. of <laughs> which, which, sense, so. it's hard to say what should be included what shouldn't be included we don't, don't want to send they don't want to send IRS auditors in to find out <laughs> <laughs> the guys been fudging your numbers <laughs> so, uh, that's true that's true okay I think in the spirit of innovation and, and to, to give everybody a chance of that no matter how wild their idea the only limits on this thing should be that it doesn't fall out of orbit until it does one complete orbit I mean, it, it seems it seems crazy to have upper limits on weights and other things. That it, why would that be a problem when you're, you know, in, in our case, we're planning to do multiple launches all the time. Because so, right now, I do know of two IR&D rockets that would be capable of coming in away. Is that what we want? Well, they could launch a small satellite as well. They could go up and... That's right. Know, I mean, so the, what, what, what would prevent them from doing that, you know, like a you know, one new CubeSat, if they just wanted to prove a point. I mean, they're going to lose I, I money know. anyway. You're right, but, but is that what we want for the competition? Well, what is the technological advancement that, you know, that comes out of this challenge? I mean, yeah, that's one thing I Here's the challenge. You, I, the, the advancement is you have a way to deploy multiple, uh, you know, uh, arrays and constellations of satellites in, you know, in one launch. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's the trend. People are moving to that trend. So we so already have that, though. That's not an advancement. Not, not in a low-cost zone, you don't have it. It's getting lower cost for oh, a race, You're right. Maybe, you're maybe not in the low cost zone, but again, if we put the challenge out and somebody comes in with an IR&D vehicle and just takes the money and runs and has no intention of providing a low cost option, and it did, and it wasn't, it was not, you know, the, the, the development costs were not included because it's already sitting there. Now it's just their launch costs are engaged. And so if their launch costs 
or, or one and a half million, they walk away with 500k, that's still a nice chunk of change. Well, you could, I mean, okay, if you're going to avoid that in one way, it's not bad, you could set a start date, like, everything from here out, like, case mm -hmm. qualifier, everything from this back and I enter. Like it's hard to yeah, enforce that, too. It's like Inner Orbital's already done some work. No, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, not, I mean, it, it's not a good one, but that is a way. Like, so, yeah, you know, it's... We're trying to find that balance to make sure that it, it's, the, the box isn't so big that the challenge loses its, its uh, objectives, but that it's not so small that we, we strike out people that are coming up with New technology developments. So make it if, uh, but I mean something reasonable. Yeah. Nobody, you know, just something that, that is that is going to accommodate. And our, I want I want our vehicle to be accommodated. And we have thirty payloads on board for two launches. So I mean that's uh, why should that be excluded as a as an option? But it should also be noted nobody has said anything above one hundred kilograms, right? I mean. If there's an argument or no, if there's no, a discussion, no. it's somewhere between one and a hundred still. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's one in fifty, let's say, or one in seventy. Would you think that one of these these massive rockets would come out for that cash? You know, to do that kind of a thing. Yeah. Like I said, if they were lured well, out in, for in any of this, it, they could easily do it for one. So, um, I guess one of the concerns is that if they turned around and thought, well, what, like for example, if Paul. What he was saying. This is my learning. This is my training wheels. This is where I learned to do orbital. And they said, you know what? I can be a spoiler in this market, so this is not a threat to me. In the future, it might be worth it to them to do that. Um, not a case of it. It's not so much. It's just a case of uh, protecting their market rather than preventing the Walmart. Market, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if some of them do not want any of us in this room to be successful. And yes, that technically includes NASA, unfortunately. Chunks of NASA. NASA is a big thing. Okay. Well, yeah. for certain definitions of successful, mm. could the uh, could the threat of bad press be enough of a deterrent to keep those people away? Has not been. Has not been. Elon, how, how Elon has criticized NASA for this challenge, mm -hmm. and Elon Elon could come in there and launch two thousand ones. No, they couldn't. But, well, he, well, that's what I was asking. That's government, that's government funded. Yeah, yeah. government funded. Well, he could use IR and D to develop a very small rocket. Yeah. That's correct, you know, because mm -hmm. he has some IR profit money you could put into this. Oh, yeah, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, so he's, he's got the engineers, put he's yeah. got the profit money, he's got the resources, he's got right. the people, he's got the time, he's got mm -hmm. the effort, he's got the laboratory, he's got the space. Right. Yeah, he, so yeah, he could spit one. So, someone like that. Or, you know, exactly, that's the reason why. Yeah. The so, then we just all have to work faster. <laughs> but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a massive hurdle, though. I mean, he has like infinite number of people compared to us. And, yeah, like, they're virtually bottomless money. Yeah, I mean, Musk is also like, focused on a bunch of key tasks that are essential, and that if one of those well, tasks fails, the goal in writing right you know, these things. the rules well, is reasonableness, fairness, and to support the objectives of NASA that have been outlined in our Space Act agreement with NASA. And that's going to be the overriding principles on which we develop these rules. And it was not to allow somebody to come in and just take the competition away. I have talked to certain people at companies I want to disclose who, you said you're, do, you're doing watches next summer. If the rules of competition are open by the spring, they could and would, if allowed, launch next spring just to spite you. I'm sure. And, and the rest of us, you're, you're mm -hmm. specifically you because you're in Washington. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think philosophically something that's also probably important for this program. I may or may not, we may or may not be competitors. So just from an outside perspective is, it'd be nice if once you announce the challenge, if the challenge is ongoing for a year or two. No. If the challenge is ongoing, uh, in terms of like when it's open, because I think one of the things is communication, publicity. And so mm -hmm. I think, you know, if you have a challenge, you, the gun goes off, and a month later somebody launches and wins, and they're actually successful, that's good. But also you'd want a lot of people in this room to get publicity, to, and that would help them. And so maybe you, you know, Delay period before first launch. So, so it's like, registration I, I, well, opens. I, I'm not sure. But I'm just saying, uh, I don't know how you could define that in the rules. But at well, the end of the day, it felt, yeah, that, yeah. that would be nice. Great, if there was, 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 was some ideas on 
price distribution. So I can buy right. Say you said it here that there's a, like a waiting period of six months after registration before anybody gets you know, scheduled to launch. Maybe, and then maybe you say there's like a year period. It says anybody that accomplishes the objectives, they will all share the prize. Yeah, or you have a first place and several second and third yeah, place like, prizes yeah, not, or something. Yeah, not, yeah, not even, you know, just yeah. say, you know, anybody that you know, gets it done in a one year period, there's a $2 million pot. It says if five of you, you know, you know were, are successful, you'll get a check for $400,000. And then maybe it's like if nobody's successful after you know, you know all that period of time, then it becomes simply a first to demonstrate, and it says the first one after you know that cl uh, that closes, you know you first to demonstrate you get the whole two million. You know, in the story, you, everybody had a window of opportunity to get their act together, you know, to, you know to you know, c compete against you know, each other, and you know everybody that you know that you know that uh, is successful, they will you know equally share in that, so that there's a way of sort of mitigating against. Yeah, <clears throat> people who have a really big head start for you know, for whatever reason. Different idea. Do you have uh, some clarification on on enhancing the prize? And you know, there are some talk of kind of like with GLXP. There's some if, you, if there's a prize, but then if you do certain things, there's enhancements. Uh, well, we have we have two million dollars. You know, okay. For the prize at, the, at this point. At point but I, maybe this is a question for. <clears throat> you guys know anybody wants to kick in more? Tell, let let person know. Yeah. <laughs> I I know that we will probably put an enhancement for teams that win and launch from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> my my boss is very positive about that. The the other thing that I'm going to seek some sponsors on whether I'm successful is another store. Assuming you have or will talk to Google. <laughs> I, or, I mean, well, there's a lot of other people. There's a lot, a lot of different people. people. Yeah. There's more than just Google. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is, they are an obvious starting point. If you have any suggestions about who I should talk to, we'll uh, please let me know. Definitely will do. Did you bring cards, first? I did. Did you bring cards? Yeah. I, I, assume, I assume that the New Mexico spaceport wants people to fly out of there. They can you know, throw money in the, in the kitty too as an inducement. Yeah, they, they want to. Yeah. Or Kodiak or yeah. Arms for that matter. Yeah. Your, your I, arch I, rivals. <laughs> I, I'm kind of torn right now too. Is you know we are talking about the prize and everything else. Um, if if someone does come in and win, like within six months and stuff. How many people are going to continue? That's the reason why you do multiple. You either a fairly large period where there's multiple divide up, or you do first, second, and third. And yeah, but but the thing is, is the prize money itself is not necessarily going to make or break the business. No, sir. It won't make the business, but it may give you enough of a, a mm -hmm. legitimacy in certain eyes that you point to something you've accomplished. That. Um, but but <clears throat> but if you have a good business plan and stuff, you don't necessarily going to need. The prize itself. You don't need the prize, well, but it does help you. Need you the publicity that kind of with it. Yeah, I mean, it's the money. Say, Look, I have an accomplishment that is significant. And we'll issue a press release and uh, you know get you on NASA TV and you know, all that, all that other you know, PR stuff that we can. You know, that we can but but I mean, if, if you're going to really if you're going to really want to promote this this space and everything, right? Mm -hmm. You got the prize. But then, you know, let's say a year on and someone else has a good technology and stuff, they may not be able to capability of doing the prize or anything. But, you know, you've been talking about the media mm -hmm. and stuff and building up media relations and stuff like that. And if the, if the whole thing is, is the prize is a way in order to get publicity for your company, right, then maybe the thing is, is if you've got a new technology and stuff, NASA helps you promote it or uses some of its, you know, Media thing in order to you know help. Well, certainly start anybody, up like anybody that, that reg, you know, registers is going to you know kind of benefit from whatever we put out there in, in terms of <clears throat> you know PR for you know for mm -hmm. the you know, for the competition. You know that also means that I mean you know as we showed yesterday, it says you know if you're registered, we, you know we you know but and you have a technology that we're interested in, we you know this gives us a mechanism to. Mm -hmm. Negotiate a license for use or right. purchase or what, you know, whatever. Yeah, but, so. but I mean, if someone comes in as a spoiler and just says, "Oh, I'm just going to take the prize out from under everybody," well, then what happens? You know, I mean, well, we're it, we're talking about all these mechanisms to try to, you know, split up the prize and stuff, and you know, it just sounds like kind of 
a winner, spread a product, you know, free publicity or whatnot, if that's the point of the prize, since the prize isn't, since the money itself is not necessarily, you know, going to make or break the business. Did you also maybe set a, I mean, I'm assuming, I just wanted to comment, kind of sort of respond to that. In that yeah, if you, that's, what that's what I'm getting at, but it doesn't sound like people are... If you, you know, you look at the GLXP and how those guys have been proceeding, I mean, what they've been doing is building a community, and... You know, if you're building a community, there kind of aren't winners and, I mean, there are winners and losers. But there are winners and people that just didn't quite make it, but it's building the community that I think you want to emphasize. And, you know, an idea, you know, such as Will was talking about, where you have a time limit and everybody that makes a launch and succeeds is able to split the prize and they're able to, you know, you have enough time for the community to sort of get together where you can have a couple of meetings and, you know, talk and have networking opportunities and get people to, to work together because there are those people that will be developing technologies and doing different aspects of the overall overall picture that uh, can be developed if you structure the competition properly. And, you know, again, that, you know, splitting the prize sort of avoids the spoiler situation which would be unfortunate and I think when you're saying it's not in the spirit of the competition I think the spirit of the competition is to develop a community that can work together to let's say support the CubeSat type launches whether it's three CubeSats or you know 50 CubeSats I mean that's kind of a tough one um, and another comment on this is um, you know if you look at the Ortiz prize you know Ryanair that ended up winning, you know, it was the Ryan Aircraft that ended up winning the Ortiz Prize. What happened to Ryanair? I mean, it really kind of promoted the birth of small aircraft for aviation. So, um, you know, there's something about even if, you know, you're just a winner, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to, you know, build a successful business out of, uh, out of this. But it's the promotion of the community and creating an opportunity that Built, that builds a community and allows a community to inter interact under this umbrella of the competition, under the banner of the competition, I think is how you should structure this. So is the mission here to develop a rocket that will service this new industry? Or what is, what is, what is the goal here? What is the actual well, goal? Back to yesterday, there's three objectives. One objective is innovation, development of new technology. The other objective within the Sunshine Challenges program is communication and getting the word out to, to, to uh, the industry, to within NASA, to investors, to whoever, okay. and the public, to the public. And the third objective is the opportunity aspect. You know, the opportunity for the nonprofit organization to get their mission statement out, the opportunity for every team that, can, that signs up to compete to promote themselves, essentially, and to be able to help them build a business base, build a business model, Create a business space, expand the business space, diverge a business space. And so the, there's there's the, the threefold objectives, and you, all of them are equally important. It's a three-legged stool. You know, you kick one out, you kick out the opportunity one, up because you know your job isn't there just to help people start companies. Get rid of that leg. Well, it's just now. You, now, why would a team want to compete? You're not going to help me to you know to try to what's what's the what's the next step after the challenge? Okay, I didn't win. Now what? I got screwed. So, you know, it, it, it is a three-legged stool that we're, you know, we're, we're trying to uh, run here for the challenge. So, and I can say when the site was formulated, it was formulated as, you know, as, a, as a nanosat launch challenge, not a small sat launch challenge. I mean, they, you know, they were you know, pretty particular about trying to, you know, to indicate that they, you know, there is a community out there that, you know, we at NASA, you know, get pleas from all, you know, all the time. They have these, these nanosat you know, people, particularly in the university community, who say, we need rides to space so that our students you know, can learn you know, that, you know, that piece, of the, you know, piece of the business. You know, just continuing to pump these things through and setting them on the shelf each year is, you know, is not, you know, is, is not you know, as satisfying as going into a launch and seeing it you know, actually you know, shoot smoke and fire. And so, you know, that's why they said it's a nano satellite <coughs> launch as opposed to a small sat or a, you know, put a hundred, you know, a hundred thousand kilograms in orbit, you know, kind, of, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah. you know, philosophically, well, even though we said it's, you know, at least one kilogram to orbit, you know, 
I, I imagine at the time they were thinking, you know, that you know, that, you know, mentally they were thinking that there was an upper limit on what you know what that was that they were you know, you know, targeting. Right. But you don't want to restrict the the business model in a way that says you can't launch. 50 at a time, right? You want you want to provide the opportunities for people building these little satellites, but it's is like we got to figure out a way to to say that without limiting to say like the part about controlling the schedule and all that. Is that really well, like part I said, of it? I mean, I, like, you know, or is the point to get them up into space, or is the point to allow them that extra control of the schedule, right? And that that tension I think seems to be what's driving. Well, you know, they're, this, they're, this whole discussion, you know, right? both, you know, both sides of that are, you know, are, are, are in play, if you will. Right. Say, I think if we had a split the pot kind of, you know, kind of thing, then somebody that does, you know, wants to, you know, to you know, send up thirty at a time, you know, could, you know, share in that just as easily as somebody who else who has made it, you know, an analysis of the business, right. to, you know, and says, all right, I'm and there's gonna, there's I'm probably for, you know, ways to make a business pretend. doing both. You know? yeah, we exactly. still have we have motorcycles and we have buses. Right? Exactly. <laughs> so that's what I'm, you know, that's kind of what I'm. You know, probing here is whether or not you know that concept of you know anybody that you know is successful in a you know a, a certain period of time would just you know share the pot you know and that we get you know, potentially multiples of solutions you know of and then the university community could decide what they really wanted to, you know, to do best you know in terms of like do they want to go you know to a particular location with, with 30 of their buddies. Or do they, you know, want to go to another vendor who says, "I will take you wherever you want to, you know, want to go, um, you know, next month." <laughs> so I guess uh, maybe the, is who here like wants to like develop ten or under like, kilograms to orbit? Uh, ten or ten or under kilograms to orbit? Liverable payload. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So I guess that's three. You talking about limiting your entire business plan to that? Yes. Yeah, starting with that. Okay, so I guess you, you are up above that and mm -hmm. you're yeah. above, okay, so I guess then would, would 50 kilos be good? Because you said 30. Well, we have, a, we have a 70. We have a 70 kilo lift on, on this particular rocket that we're we'll using. Oh, okay, so each satellite is actually not one kilo. It, we could have one single 70 kilo, but we're, we, have, uh, we have a variety of, of different payloads. Some are double cube sets, some are single tube sets. And there, there are all sorts of payloads on board. Okay, but I think yours is the maximum in this room, right? Seventy. I don't know. Is it? From what I've been hearing, it's higher than seventy. Seems to me. Okay. Uh, Forty, uh, thirty kilometers to four hundred fifty kilometers. Sorry, thirty kilograms to four hundred fifty kilometers circular orbit between any inclinations from Kennedy or Wallops. So okay, well, I think seventy is. I mean, it's between one hundred and one. And <laughs> I think seventy. That would be that would be fine. It'd be fine with that. I mean, if that's. Uh, I just don't want to be. I don't want to be ousted because we have a giant payload. Okay, so so she has the bus. We have the motorcycles. Yeah. His is like a mid-sized van. And yeah, the, the minivan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's there some debate. The feedback has been registered, and it'll be mm -hmm. it reflected in the rules. Um, <laughs> unless we have more to discuss on that topic. Next topic. Yeah. Yeah, I think seventy would be fine. I mean, I think we beat this one. It's like a, yeah. a massive. Well, or, or, or possibly split it between, say, one half seventy and half no more than three. Or dedicate it, because if if you got customers who want to go on their own uh, one and do not want to pay seventy for or to go on that one, then yes, they're going to need something that can launch just one or three. Yeah, but if your business case is solid, then. Whether you win the prize or not, you will have gotten publicity because he's going to go. They're going to go around and look at each one of your yep. organizations and photograph it while you're manufacturing, while you're designing. So you're going to, you know, your name's going to be smattered all over the place. And if your business case is solid, you're going to go forward whether they even decide to with, withhold this challenge. So to, you know that two million isn't going to make or break your business case. It's just but, free yeah. publicity. Well, it definitely helps. I mean, you know, winning is not chump change. Okay. You know, when you're this. talking about a window for launch, are we talking about a three month, six month? We're well, hoping to turn what? stuff around in a week, if possible. Well, uh, yeah, no, I'm talking about first month. <coughs> a window when all teams the competition. Are if, if, if we go with the idea of a window, a, a window opportunity, I'd say a year. Yeah, I'd say a year because it depends yeah. where you launch from. With the season, you know. Florida, yeah. hurricane season, not the best time to launch. I would suspect you're going to need longer than that because you've got a big right. unknown, which is your ability to get the paperwork. 
done for this thing. And that's that, part of the contest. That's a, that's yeah, a business liability because you don't know when people are going to get back to you. Well, like, I guess uh, it depends on when you start the window. Well, mm -hmm. and I've never known window anyone to launch window. a rocket the first time and have it successful. Yeah. So you better give yourself a second launch. <laughs> <laughs> to get the first one up. <laughs> you have to do two. I mean, is, is so that, that means you're going to have to do three. <laughs> you're going to have to be successful. <laughs> Trust me. Trust me, baby. <laughs> many <laughs> many <laughs> many <laughs> many <laughs> no one in the launch business has ever been successful the first time. If you have your failure in your second one, you got to have four now. Bingo. <laughs> No, Elon has three. You guys will be out doing some suborbital stuff and, you know, anyway, testing. Elon you know. had tons of money, tons of time, and a Lockheed Martin team that he had pulled off of the Lockheed Martin rocket people. And he still failed the first three times. He didn't do any suborbital launches, did he? Yeah, he went full in. Yeah, like, he went full up uh, right. orbital. Nothing like takes to hold him. <laughs> yeah, but uh, all of, let me say what, two of his failures were, you know, within sight of the launch pad. Yeah. So that's suborbital. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's just me, baby. It's suborbital. It's not recoverable, though. <laughs> Boom. And he went and got a license for it, too, yeah, man. Exactly, and a license for that right. suborbital. Okay, thank, thanks, you guys. Right. I, I appreciate yeah. everybody's comments. Um, good, please, good feedback. Please do pick up one of Percy's business cards. Um, he is the primary point of contact uh, for this. So. Thank you. Um, right. What do you have next? Sure. Here, just pass them around. The, do you have any more questions or anything else? Yeah, please. Okay, any more questions for Percy real quick? Uh, yeah, I have a quick question. So, um, I remember from like the earlier talks, it's, uh, so it's basically time you put in, not actual, like, lawyer numbers. Like, go through the whole certification, the whole process of FAA, and space force, and air force, and all that. Only if your organization requires some lawyer fees. Okay, I see. So basically, you just put in your time, and you decide to charge for that, because otherwise, it's just time. We normally don't, don't charge for our time. In helping the clients okay. through the launch process. And uh, another question was, uh, you know, say if I get all the FAA paperwork done, and everything, um, and I decided, I decided to launch tomorrow, can I do that from Kennedy? And, and how, I mean, how long would it take if not? Obviously, I wouldn't be able to do it tomorrow. Like, if I decide to launch as soon as possible, what's the time frame, for example? Steve, would you have that on top of your hand? Now if they, you've got to get the FAA, go through the FAA. Once I've done all that, right? Space, yeah. So Space I want to launch as soon as possible. possible. What, what, how long would it take for you guys to get ready for me to do test launches or whatnot? Sub I don't think it's just a Probably within 30 days. If we've got all your information and we know what you what you're getting ready to do. So let's say we had we got an amateur launch license from the FAA. Yeah. Um, then it's thirty more days for you guys to set up. Mm -hmm. okay. If if for whatever insane reason we didn't talk to the FAA and you at the same time. I'm okay. assuming that you're gonna to talk to us at the same time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so we'll have that same lead time. Okay, I see and also you uh, we you can do like amateur launches from Kennedy or no. Amateur class. Yeah, like Yeah, we can do amateur class. Okay. I don't know if you might want to go for an amateur class launch. You like, like do the, in class three, class four. I mean, yeah, the high you, you're stuff. gonna go through a lot of the same things at Kennedy as you would for the regular launch. Okay, I see. Would yeah. it be easier elsewhere, or it might be easier for elsewhere if you just if 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 you just testing things. Because I know when we go through, we we launch a lot of super low keys for educational purposes. Mm -hmm. And we go through the full process that we go through with a Falcon, Falcon 1 with a Super Loki. Oh, okay. So and we go through the... Why? <laughs> why? Population. <laughs> why? Because the Population's is too close. Well, we, we're working on the <coughs> Eastern Range. People. Hmm? I said it's people. There's yeah. populations yeah. too close. You can't have the rocket take off and go to Miami. <laughs> Even if it's a little one. <laughs> Even if it's a little one. Okay, guys. Um, I don't know. Okay, guys.